All right, so lately I've been showcasing various builds for Escape from Tarkov, focusing on getting the most value when building or upgrading your gaming rig. The key takeaway is that an X3D CPU is the way to go. For the best bang for your buck, the 5700X3D is an excellent choice. If you're looking for top tier performance at a reasonable price, the 7800X3D stands out as best in class, especially when it's compared to the prices of previous generation top shelf hardware. The X3Ds are where it's at. If you're in the US, you can snag the 5700X3D for about $160 ship. X3D chips make motherboard selection almost irrelevant since they'll perform just as well on entry level boards as on enthusiast ones. The same goes for RAM. Speed and latency don't matter much because the large stacked cache makes paying for top tier memory almost pointless. As I showed in a previous video, if you already have some DDR4, even on an older Intel system, you can switch to an A520 with the 5700X3D for potentially under $200. If you're on an AM4 platform, all you need to do is drop in an X3D and you've got a no-brainer generational gaming upgrade. The 7800X3D is the current gaming king, though it will cost a bit more than the 5700X3D because it requires DDR5 and you need to be on the newer AM5 platform. However, its price is very reasonable compared to Intel's top gaming chip, the 14900K. The 7800X3D runs just as well on an A620 as it does on an X670E. The RAM speed still doesn't matter much, and for the best value without sacrificing performance, you can go for the lowest cost options. If you're lucky enough to live near a micro center, you can grab a 7800X3D plus B650 plus 32 gigabytes of RAM bundle for $500, which is the best deal out there right now. Even if you aren't, A620s and B650s can be found new for between $100 and $150, and DDR5 prices have dropped significantly. Considering that a 14900K can cost around $600 and requires a higher tier motherboard and RAM to reach its full potential, the 7800X3D is an easy choice for gamers looking to maximize performance. In this video, I compared the 5600X against the 5700X3D and the 7800X3D, all paired with the 4070 GPU running high textures with low shadows. You can find the detailed specs and settings in the video description. I tested on factory and streets in 1080 and 1440. First, I took each rig to factory offline in 1080, offline with no AI, to see the nominal performance without any AI or players on the map. Then I did runs on streets in offline mode with no AI to record nominal streets performance. And finally, I took them online to get real world numbers with all assets loaded in. So on factory offline 1080p, the 5600X came in with an average of 288.8 FPS. The 5700X3D came in at 325.6 and the 7800X3D came in at 413.7. Basically, there was about a 13% increase with the 5700X3D and close to a 40% increase with the 7800X3D. With the 1%, there was about a 50% increase with the 57 and about a 100% increase with the 78. So I think this is a good reflection of how good of a value the 5700X3D is. You're gonna get a large jump in performance. The 7800X3D is top tier, but the jump between the 5700X3D and the 7800X3D is not as drastic. It's kind of like going from 60 to 144 hertz and then comparing 144 to 240. There is a difference, but there's a much larger impact between 60 and 144, and it's kind of the same deal here. Okay, moving on to the streets offline run in 1080, the 7800X3D was averaging around 131 with the 93.91%, 5700X3D around 101 with the 73, and then the 5600X about 81 and 57. So it's about a 25% increase with the 5700X3D over the 5600X and close to a 60% increase for the 7800X3D. So it looks like on a map like Streets with a ton more assets, that difference is going to be a little more pronounced. Taking these three systems online in patch 14.9 on Streets, I was averaging 92.6 on the 7800X3D, 76.2 on the 5700X3D, and 62.6 FPS on the 5600X. 
So that's about a 20% difference between the 5600X and the 5700X 3D and close to a 50% difference between the 5600X and 7800X 3D. When I took it to streets in offline mode in 1440, pretty much more of the same results. The 5700X 3D has about a 27% increase in FPS and the 7800X 3D has about a 56% increase. And lastly, on streets in online mode in 1440, more of the same ratios pretty much, but um, lower overall numbers as there are more assets to load in the online mode. So I hope this comparison helps you understand the performance increases you can expect if you're currently on a Ryzen 5000 chip and looking to upgrade to an X3D. The 5700X3D is hands down the best bang for your buck, putting you in the elite ballpark for Tarkov performance, while the 7800X3D is the top dog and remains a relatively good value. With the new AM5 Ryzen 9000 vanilla chips incoming, I think the 7800X3D will still hold its top spot as the gaming king for now. The AM5 X3Ds are expected to release later this year, but I'm guessing AMD will want to milk the more expensive 9950X3D and 9900X3D models before releasing the more wallet-friendly 9800X3D, which should take over as a top choice when it's released. Either way, I wouldn't wait for these releases if you're looking to upgrade now, as the Ryzen 9000s are compatible with the current AM5 motherboards, and all X3D chips are likely to hold their value in the resale market for the foreseeable future. As always, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time here. Every single view, comment, and like means the world to me as I continue on this journey to become a full-time content creator. And that's all I got for this one. See you in the next one.